Good evening. We at St. Basil's Parish regard the love of God to be the foundation of all life and ministry. We believe in the ever-present love of God as witnessed through Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We believe that each person is loved by God and is of sacred worth. Therefore, through God's grace, we welcome all persons to our parish. We express God's hospitality by creating a safe, healing, accessible, and transforming place for all to enter. Further, we acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we gather here on the unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Nation, whose presence here reaches back to time immemorial. We honor their long history of welcoming many nations to this beautiful territory, and we uphold and uplift the voice and values of our host nation. In addition to your own personal intentions, this Mass intention is for Lorne Mahoney on the first anniversary of his death, requested by his wife, Helen Mahoney, and family. Our presider this evening is Father Dan Hawkins. Please stand. Good afternoon, everyone. So you can see we have a baptism today. They told me that at the last minute. But you know, in Latin they say, semper paratus. What does that mean? Oh, who is that? Oh, good for you. Always prepared or always ready. So I'd like to invite um, Declan to come up with, with, with his parents. Lord God, we thank you for the gift and power of faith in our lives. Hear our prayers for Declan this day of his baptism. Through the baptismal water, may your spirit embrace him, that he may become a sincere witness of Christ for all that he meets. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
And may the grace and peace and joy that comes with knowing God our Father and his Son, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. Let's take a few moments and come into the presence of God. Help us, Lord, to attend to the needs of others and of your creation. Lord, have mercy. We admit to being your wayward people. Christ, have mercy. Let us find again the light that darkness cannot overcome. Lord, have mercy. And may the Lord our God have mercy on us, forgive us, and bring us to life everlasting. We praise you, Lord, as we prepare for this sacred time. Empty us of the cares and concerns of life so that we may be open to receive your word. May your Holy Spirit guide our thoughts and prayers as we come into your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. All who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer.
their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, now I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I glorify my ministry in order to make my own flesh and blood jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the re reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? The gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord.
Jesus preached the good news of the kingdom and healed all who were sick. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. His disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away. She keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. So, as Christians, most of us accept the fact of God's reality, but as human beings, we are very interested in God's identity and characteristics. In other words, what God is really like. We have all kinds of forms of images for God, but which images are legitimate representations? And if we believe that images of God are only idle speculation without consequence, we should remind ourselves that images of God being judgmental, vindictive, and punishing have, been, have brought fear and guilt to millions of people who have accepted that. We can only know and learn about God by looking at Jesus. That is why Jesus came to us. When we see Jesus lamenting over our hardness of heart, callousness to one another's needs, and blindness toward opportunities of mutual service, we hear God lamenting. Always read the Gospels with an eye on Jesus and see God in action. In the words of Jesus, hear God speaking. In the concerns of Jesus, see God's concerns. And in the gestures of Jesus, see the gestures of God. Your curiosity and fears about God can be laid to rest the more you look at and come to understand Jesus. But of course, not to take things out of context. Some people practice a method of prayer known as lucky dipping. None of you know what that is, do you? Anyone? Maybe. <laughs> well, I didn't know what the name of it was, but when I was a teenager, I did it a few times. So it works like this. 
You begin by praying for guidance on some issue in your life, and then you open your Bible, and wherever it falls, you put your finger on the verse without looking, you dip, huh? And you read what the verse says, and that's God's answer to your prayer. No, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> well, one day, a guy found himself in a heap of trouble, and so in desperation he prayed and then lucky dipped into the Bible. And opening his eyes, he read the verse, and Judas went out and hanged himself. And not liking that message, he lucky dipped again. And this time the verse said, go and do likewise. None of you have ever done that? Tell the truth and shame the devil. No one? No? Ah, uh, see? I'm a priest and I admit I did it years ago when I was a teenager. I think I did it more out of curiosity as to what would happen. But, and, you know, it takes more than lucky dipping to stay the course some days. There's just too much going on around us and in the world. And how we have a puzzling gospel today because its tone doesn't seem to match the Jesus we know. This saying of Jesus about not giving food from the table to the dogs, it was a proverb of that time, and it was something similar to what we have today. Charity begins at home, which is what he was telling that lady. The woman was not Jewish, so this is a profound prophetic moment that gives the first hint of the worldwide mission of the Church. Jesus is speaking to the woman, but teaching the disciples and us. The Lord did the same thing in the multiplication of the loaves and teaches the disciples how they will meet the spiritual hunger of millions through the Eucharist. The Church is to be universal in its reach. That is the truth uniting the readings today. The Lord says through Isaiah, the first reading, my house shall be a house of prayer for all peoples. We begin by taking people as they are, but we don't have to leave them that way. We give a piece of the gospel to others by how we act, by what we say and do. So I'd like to uh, invite uh, the parents of Declan, Claire, and, and, Ma and uh, Maria, Claire and Mark. Come right up here. Right up here. And does one of you just want to say to everyone that we present Declan for baptism to have faith? So everybody hears. So he'll have faith. Go ahead. We present Declan for baptism to have faith. Great. Claire and Mark, in presenting your child for baptism, you are promising to bring Declan up as a participating member of Christ's body. And you are promising for years to come to teach him by word and example that happiness and peace are to be found in loving God and our neighbor as we love ourselves. Are you ready to make this promise? And could I invite the godparents to come up, Clint and Maria? Filipino? 
Is that all the godparents? There's supposed to be a whole family of godparents. <laughs> Welcome all the others. <laughs> See, now he has lots of help, right? So you better be good parents because they'll all check on you. Clinton, Maria, will you, are you willing to help these parents keep their promise as Christian parents? Be loud. Yes, I ah, oh, I like that. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are the faith community in which Declan will grow to maturity. The powerful example of our faith and love can make the unseen God visible and known to him. Declan, the people of St. Basil and the whole church welcome you with great joy. And in the name of the church, I claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of the cross that I now trace on your forehead. And I invite your parents and godparents and some members of the community to do the same. down to a few people, okay. So you're not supposed to take the baby, you're supposed to return the baby here. <laughs> Almighty Father, you sent your only Son into the world to break the bonds of sin and to rescue the human race from darkness and to destroy the power of evil. We all pray now for Declan. Set him free that all, from all that might enslave him. Give light to his mind that he may see all things clearly and warmth to his heart that he may always live in your love. Parents and godparents and people of this community, we have committed ourselves to guiding and assisting Declan to grow up in Christ. If we are to be true to this commitment, our faith must be strong. So let us join in renewing our faith commitment. So please stand. So I'll ask some questions of the baptismal party and then some of everyone. Do you renounce evil and its power in the world which defies God's righteousness and love? Don't forget to be loud. Do you renounce the ways of sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you turn to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? To everyone now, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Lord God and Father, look now with love upon us and unseal the font of baptism. By the power of the Holy Spirit, give to this water the grace of your Son, so that in this sacrament of baptism we may be made innocent by new birth. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon this water. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism also rise with him to newness of life. So if we bring Declan over here, thank you. And uh, if you just place him good, not upside down, because he'll scream. <laughs> it's okay. 
God our Father has called Declan by name to a second birth that will lead to eternal joy. Aided by his parents, godparents, and all of us, he now responds to God's call. Declan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's good. You can hold him up. He tried, he didn't know I had a microphone. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and welcomes you now into his holy people. And he now anoints and consecrates you with the chrism of salvation as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king. May you be transformed and strengthened to live always as a temple of his spirit, radiant with the goodness of life. Amen. <laughs> Thanks. No. You are a new creation and clothed in Christ. See in this white garment the dignity of your Christian life and bring it with you throughout your whole life. One of the godparents light the candle from this gigantic thing here. If, if it you go up on the stairs, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. That's good. Receive the light of Christ, parents, godparents, and members of this community. This light is entrusted to us to be kept burning brightly. Declan has been enlightened by Christ. May he walk always as a child of the light, keeping the flame of faith alive in his heart. And when the Lord comes, may he go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Now he's quiet. Mark and Maria, God is the giver of all life. He has brought you joy through the wondrous gift of your child. As you continue on the long journey that will bring Declan to maturity, may God grant you the light to see his way, the strength to follow in it, and the tenderness to heal the wounds of those who fall. And may you come at last to that eternal home which has been prepared for you from all eternity. And may the Lord our God bless you throughout all your family life, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us ask the Lord God to hear us today as we're all here in prayer, and let us remember in our prayers Declan as well, and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us through all our lives. For the Church, that we may try to imitate the faith and courage of the Canaanite woman, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. For Pope Francis, that he may continue unceasingly to lead with faith and hope and prayer for the Universal Church, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. For world leaders, as we remember this Wednesday, August 23rd, World Day for Slave Trade Abolition, that they may strive to eliminate human trafficking and slavery practiced on land and sea throughout the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those enduring the worldwide natural disasters of fire, floods, and high winds, especially across Canada, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homeless and marginalized, especially in our own city of Ottawa, that they may soon find the help and support they need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the courage to denounce all that disfigures God's creation and to commit fully to caring for our earthly home and for all the created beings we share it with, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish who need healing and for those who care for them, remembering especially Philip Goldring, Tony Romero, Kevin Sloan, Duane Romacco, Pika Beck, Dennis Mayer, Teresa Hall, Tom Charlebaugh, Amanda Monette, Diana Gorman, and Father Winkler, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the deceased, we remember especially Learn Mahoney, Archbishop Marcel Gervais, Betty Bergen, Deacon Robert Russell, those who have died in the Ukraine and in all other wars, and for all who mourn them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. The things, Lord, that we pray for give us the grace to labor for through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. And now, my friends, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God our Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. By sending down your Spirit upon them like the morning dew, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his suffering, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to those who had gathered with him and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper had ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to those who had gathered with him and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant of love, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. O 
the mystery of faith. When we eat his bread and drink his cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of our salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be here in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by sharing the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your people, the church, spread all over the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Marcel, our Bishop, and all your family. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her husband, with your apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we also may share eternal joy and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. to be here together in prayer. Let us pray the way Jesus asked us and also to remember to keep Declan in our prayers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from all evil. Give us peace in our day, and that by the help of your love and mercy, we may always be free from any sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your friends, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of all your people, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So let us share some sign of Christ's peace. Peace of Christ, the peace of Christ, the peace of Christ, the peace of Christ, the peace of Christ, peace of Christ, the peace of Christ. That's one way to keep him quiet. <laughs> the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Holy God, you know our joys and sorrows, our faults and failures. Give us a new way of thinking and being in the world. Help us to share your grace and mercy with others through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the Lord our God bless us and care for us always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go and continue the ministry of Christ. Announcements? Next weekend, St. Basil's Parish will be having a financial collection to support the St. Vincent de Paul Ottawa Central Council's initiative to raise funds for affordable housing for Indigenous peoples in Ottawa. Please see the second page of the bulletin for details. We are happy to announce that Chantelle Balazar will be our new choir director for the 10 a.m. Mass beginning on Sunday, September 3rd. Further details are in the bulletin. Please see the bulletin regarding an approved three-month-long pilot project to create a position of operations manager and everyday operations for the parish. The deadline to present your candidacy is September 8th.